Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, June 27th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, the Determined Link, episode number 606. Uh, we're, we're doing a part, part two. Uh, we're, we're doing this the following week, but it's a part two. Right? Well, the yes. Week. Yeah. It's been a week since we yeah. recorded, right? It's timey wimey. Yeah. Exactly. Whoa, it's been a week. <laughs> 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 nice. I feel one week older. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm doing my new role honest, at my I job, really do, working Monday really to Friday. It's been like really before. great. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that in the in the what's going on for the month of June because Jeff has a, a a nice announcement of things. Anyway, we'll go over it at that it time. Very... But yes, go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> uh, so it's LGBTQIA plus Pride 2021 Part Two. Yeah. it's kink, baby. Oh, 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 I'm like, I'm like, right. I'm sitting here like hurting the fuck out of my hand trying to get this. To... <laughs> I, nope, I realized I had work. stopped sharing sound and I started playing the let's talk about kink little to sounder we had. So I figured that out. I'm watching the two of you and I'm like. David is busy pounding the fuck out of the palm of his hand with his with his uh, fan, and Jeff's over there jamming to Janet Jackson. I was like, that, 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 that. I see what's happening. <laughs> Janet Jackson, somebody else. I don't remember who it was. It's, kinky, kinky, it's salt and pepper. Oh, oh, that's um. Oh wait, yeah, who is escape? The kink. I think that's escape. Kinky, kinky, I think that's escape. You're right. I was thinking of feedback with like, Janet Jackson. Where where the hell did we get that sounder from? We haven't heard it in a while. I know we haven't we haven't done an LTAK in quite a while, and this theoretically is an LTAK, but not. It's an LTAK, but it's also an ATNS. So we just kind of supplanted the LTAK with the ATNS, and we're being all acronistic because we're talking about LGBTQIA plus. Yeah, it's it's oh, lots. no, it was it's SWV that did. Can we get hinky tonight? And we called the have Park more Park. initialisms. Yeah, SWV. Because, <laughs> you know, here at COL, we're all about the abbreviation. LGBTQIA. Yeah. So uh, this year for our SOL. annual discussion. <laughs> GTFO. <laughs> STFU. <Okay. clears throat> so, <laughs> um, as I was saying, so this year for our Pride discussion, we've got a two-parter. Previously on Cubs Out Loud. We discussed corporations. Oh boy. And now that we've told big, big, big business, you know, box stores, international conglomerates, uh, we told them to fuck off with their pandering. So let's piss off even more people on our thoughts about kink not being considered a part of pride for our community. Uh, I, I, had, I, since last week, I, I did remember, or, or uh, I, I, I did. I, I looked over the, the list again, and I did notice that I never shop at Walmart. I refuse to shop at Walmart. Uh, I, 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 I do not like it, Sam I am. Sam's Club. Uh, I do not like uh, uh, Walmart and ham. 
anyways um but it, and i did notice that wasn't on that list in that little like block list that i went on my whole tangent about how the hrc zero score score right. um, um was target based out of minneapolis minnesota Target. it is target boutique is my department store of choice amongst those of, of oh. that level and that's where i do shop so i'm very proud to say well, that i shop there that's, that's nice don't buy their private merch because it's shit um oh <laughs> now are you like putting bias on because you work for a competitor no i mean different class <laughs> of competitor all. but no 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 if you look at it close enough it's shit rainbows are in wrong directions um like the suit like this short sleeve like fucking suit is so like wrongly like put together and color blocked like like it's a rainbow suit you would think they could put the fake and rainbow things to you know fabric pieces together so that they align a little better nope don't do that you uh, know what um, i use target for Sometimes I get food because they have chili beans, while H-E-B, the actual grocery store, does not. Anyways. Um, and also my basic other supplies that I can't get mm. in the Super Mercado right over there. So, so I'm not actually yeah. shopping for much clothes from Target Boutique, uh, although mm. I, I would probably get replacement jeans from Target, but that, that, that's not yeah. pride stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, now that we've moved on from corporations, halfway. I mean, who who's yeah, the we yeah. in this scenario? <laughs> Me and the mouse in my pocket, maybe? Because I mean, I mean, maybe. Well, you. he said we, which means there were multiple people, and since it was just Damon and I, that would be the we. No, no, no. What David said was, we have moved on from corporations. And I was challenging that because y'all, both of you were going on about it. And I was like, just sitting here waiting because I was like. Yeah. Damon and I, I have, have gone through pro corporations. Gary. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's okay, talk about it. Now that we have moved on, <laughs> we are joining you in the uh -huh. conversation. Already in progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The scene is already in progress and doesn't have a safe word, so buckle up. Um, <laughs> ain't that the truth? Well, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Son of a bitch, you keep doing that. What, what, what? Stop it. So, this, okay, it's loose. So, the, so for y'all that don't know, my little cord here is loose as shit because it there just went out again. There, there it goes. There it goes. You coming back? Are you going to come back? There you are. Wait, wait for it. Wait, no, nope. wait, <laughs> wait. There it goes. Oh. There we go. Delayed release is fucked. Whatever it is, don't touch it. Well, it's hard to... Anyway. Anyway. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> Get my fucking shit back. By the way, kids, we're a little punchy right now. <laughs> so, that being said... Um, yeah, so uh, this weird thing happened in the social media landscape that Kink came under fire that... Uh, they, and I don't know who they are, apparently have expressed an opinion that kink does not have a place at Pride anymore because some of the statements have been things along the lines of because kink is built on a foundation of consent, you can't force kink upon people who show up at Pride events because they did not consent to seeing those displays of XYZ or whatever. Mm hmm and we're gonna get into that yes we will we will we will get to that <laughs> i i'm gonna apologize in advance there are gonna probably be a lot of opinions over on this side of the table so <laughs> oh shit i should have made popcorn yeah you might, you, you might. <laughs> That's okay. okay continue continue so you can eat air popcorn it's like being on a diet there's no calories so here's here's the dealio um a great many opinions were expressed online, and I saved some things in various social media, and I actually reached out to previous COL guest Perrin Yay. because they shared on a limited audience social media something, and I asked them today, I said, is it okay with your permission that I, like, you know, 
basically quote or or paraphrase, you know, what you had posted because I wanted to be cognizant of the fact that like they posted it in a way that it was not public to the world, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to like just presume because they've been a previous guest that they would be okay with us, ha- you know, mentioning their name or, or talking about what they had to say. So what they did say was, so here's the thing, because it apparently needs to be said, wearing a leash in public harms absolutely no one. It violates no consent. This discourse reeks of, quote, think of the children, end quote, and, quote, no cake at pride, end quote. And I'm not here for this sanitization. For years, these types of excuses were used to actively harm homosexuals, trans folk, and anyone else who didn't fit the public's perception of normal. Still to this day, we see people crying foul when anyone deviates from that norm. Yeah. And I, I I marked it when I read it because I was like, something tells me they have something to say. Yeah. <laughs> and, They're, and it's true. And they um, have a right to say that. <laughs> It, yeah. it, it's one of those uh, things where it's like, uh, it looks like you spilled some tea there. Go, go, go. There you go. <laughs> there it goes. To... <laughs> it's Would like, you oops. like some? <laughs> Would you like Excuse some tea? Excuse me, but I think he spilled some tea. Oh, my cup is empty because all the tea has been spilled. So. I, I appreciate that Perrin had to say basically the like one of the basic tenets of this discussion that's happened in the social media sphere on, I guess I want to say this side. I, mm-hmm. I was about to say our side, but I don't want to speak for all three of us. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm presuming we're, we're of like mind in a way mm-hmm. that basically the idea of not including kink at pride is um, highly questionable. Yeah, because I can understand the viewpoint that mm-hmm. kink is not meant for. Uh, I don't know how else to phrase it. And these are not my words, but what I imagine some would say is the young and the innocent. Mm-hmm. But there's a part of me that wants to say, "Listen, Biatch, Pride was never made for the young and the innocent. It did not start for the young and the innocent." And, while there may be some evolution mm-hmm. of pride and we have expanded our community yes. of, you know, alphabet representation, that does not mm-hmm. mean that we discard the things that make us uncomfortable or we dislike or we're not OK with or mm-hmm. we might feel ashamed of in some strange way. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I mean, as a person who is getting older by the second minute, hour, day, week, month, year, like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to be a senior gay at some point sooner than not. So are we saying that we don't want our older generations to come to pride? Because that's, you know, a whole other. Like, yeah, kind of that's, that's a whole other question and thing that I, I was sitting here like, as you mentioned, as soon as you mentioned, I was like, yep. Like, so. Let's kind of break this down a little bit. I don't know if you have the, um, if this person, that not parent, but the other um, link you gave kind of breaks it down. Um, there have been some several kind of conversations about like kink at Pride. And kink is being used as the bigger, broader, larger umbrella term here. I want to kind of get that out of the way. Because um, reality is there's a difference between like kink at pride and like wearing leather at pride or wearing a pup hood at pride or um, like as Perrin mentioned, like a collar or stuff at pride. There's leash. to me, they're, 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 they're or leash or whatever. Yeah. They're different to me. They're different things. Mm-hmm. Um, um, kink. I would like to say is kind of like the practice. It's the use. It's things that will happen. And to be blunt and honest, that's never going to happen at at a pride festival, at a pride parade, or a pride event. That's not going to happen. And I'm kind of get what you mean. What I mean is, as you're kind of looking at me, Gary, I see it. You're not going to see kink acts. You're not going to see someone flogging someone. You might. I'm, I'm just thinking, like you shouldn't. 
it, you have to be careful. But mm-hmm. like in the in the per, I've seen it, but let me I'm gonna kind of get to it. You shouldn't, or you can anyway. So to me, there's that. Um, with the caveat, yeah, people wearing like the the you know a pup hood, uh, leather vest chaps what have you usually tastefully not tastefully but they'll wear the chaps but they'll wear something maybe a jock strap there's, maybe there's some underwear yeah there'll be some appropriateness because it's still public and it's still people out there you know doing things you're not going to see someone in full ass leather because full ass leather is hot um if you see that you might want to make sure that they have someone near them to like watch over them because um things happen heat is awesome is a thing and leather doesn't breathe well um or neither does neoprene or rubber um so leather kink rubber folks like if you're gonna go that route um hydrate 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 make sure you have someone with you because if you get heat exhaustion like <laughs> like it's Take bad. a lot of breaks in so, the air conditioning look <laughs> yeah air conditioning look good god um i did one walk <laughs> um I did a kink walk and uh, not kink walk. I did a profess, uh, parade and I walked the whole parade and I, I jumped back and forth between wearing my boots or not. And I decided not to. And I'm so glad I didn't because you think you can do it. Cause you know, I've worn my boots for hours, you know, while, while standing at a bar or whatever, it is not the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is not the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like when so. you go hiking in the woods or, or up a mountain, you're gonna wear sensible shoes. You're not gonna wear them high heels. No, no. Um, so yeah, so again, are there like things like that that there are certain things that will probably happen? As I saw Gary's face, you might see some some flogging demonstrations. But for the most part, or at least I hope, who knows, um, those should be done with consent of the people involved. Um, and they're usually not, or they shouldn't be. I could be wrong. I don't know. They could be potentially full-on scenes. Um, as someone who is a representative of a leather organization that um, has essentially, we, we haven't removed ourselves from pride. We have decided not to put out a booth um, anymore because it wasn't beneficial for the organization mm-hmm. meaning we weren't we were getting people that would show up and we would talk with them but it never really garnered, garnered membership or um um interest beyond pride mm-hmm. right. um it's great to have the representation there and there are lots of other organizations in the communities that will provide that there are non lgbt kink organizations that sometimes participate in pride so because usually that sphere of 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 kink well those organizations aren't specifically lgbtq they may have an association with lgbtq Mm. people so exactly that's where the connections and the reason why i mentioned caveat earlier is because you started talking about the, the scenes at pride well there may be scenes at pride but the caveat is usually they are in spaces that are already deemed to be 18 plus. So True. they're they're not really public scenes well, or demonstrations. Right, right, right. So Gary, this is where ahead. it gets complicated because yeah. formerly when I went to Pittsburgh Pride, which I have not been to for a couple of years because um, the Delta Foundation imploded and the president uh, ended up in jail and a bunch of shit. Anyways, so, oh yeah, girl. <laughs> hot that, mess. Whole, hot whole, whole, mess. Whole, that's a whole other cup of tea. Right, right. So <laughs> before that happened, and I was more active in, in the bear community based in Pittsburgh, and we did Pride and stuff like that, I cannot say with 100% certainty, but I can pretty much guarantee that during the parade or during the downtown festival with the booths that there are things that are seen that Mm -hmm. the lay public might clutch their pearls over. Mm -hmm. And understandably, the audience that, that sees said things that bother them 
is not the intended audience, but yet they are mm-hmm. still an audience. And that's where it yeah. gets complicated. Agreed. So I will agree that technically there is not demonstrations taking place at a public venue, but if people are walking along and they think it's fun to put on some chaps and hang their ass cheeks out and to run around with a whip and like, you know, to be playful in a parade or whatever, like, and they're not technically really a true, I, oh, I don't like saying the word. They're not a member of an organization that represents the kink or leather BDSM community. That's kind of where it gets a little dicey. Yeah, it can Just get dicey. Just like women showing up at Pride with that are topless. Because in some areas, specifically mm-hmm. Columbus, Ohio, um, I don't want to say it's famous or infamous, but that was something I adjusted to because I showed mm-hmm. up many years ago and did not know <laughs> that there was a local ordinance that women could go topless in public mm-hmm. and there's nothing to be done about it. Yep. Um, and I wasn't bothered by it. I was caught off guard because mm-hmm. I have spent my life being conditioned as a, a cis white male, you know, that, you know, the tatas do not come out like they, you know, that's a privacy issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are these women who are just, you know, bearing it full glory. And I was mm-hmm. like, OK, girl, like that's yeah. that's a thing. It was, it I, I think I remember that it was bother it was, me. Yeah, I remember that. So that was part of the, I remember that ordinance because I was going to Columbus Pride and it was one of those things where they were talking about because it was essentially a double standard. Men could be like shirtless and run around and do whatever women could not. And it was like, well. Right. Like we, yeah, this is all about pride and equality and stuff. So, let, so the, let the breast be free. Right, right. So uh, my the reason I bring that up is kind of as an an equivalent or a parallel of where I can see some audiences would say, you know, like that's not yeah acceptable. Mm-hmm. And really, kind of where I think some of this comes from, not all of it, where some of it comes from is the conflict of you know in. Uh, was it 2015, you know, we get marriage equality, quote unquote, mm-hmm, like we mm-hmm. get the Supreme Court case that same gendered couples can get married and yeah, ergo with that over the years has come some advancements in like having children and adopting children. Mm-hmm. And so now we have, you know, multiple parents of the same gender or even like, you know, a uh, broader you know family definitions Mm -hmm. and they bring their children with them to pride because they're very you know proud and they want them to you know be a part of a festival or parade or whatever and this is where i see a little bit of the conflict comes in because you know they bring their their six-year-old or whichever Mm -hmm. and you know they're like my feeling on it is if you make this decision to bring underage individuals into a space and you want them to be like rec- recognizing of the broader community mm-hmm. or let's say you consider yourself an ally and you bring your family mm-hmm. like then you have to accept all of the community. You don't yep. get to say, well, we're going to not include, you know, the, you know, senior gays or the drag queens or the trans yeah. folk or yeah. whatever, yeah. you know, like you just you cannot draw these lines mm-hmm. i mean there now to be fair there are certain lines that should be drawn you know like a, a sex act in public yeah understandably should have some parameters around it Agreed. as in it should not be a public space it should be a private space Agreed. you know <laughs> so like i like that was the other thing that most people are, have been bringing up in regards to this like because there was this infamous uh meme that came out during around this time. And it was talking about like, you know, no kick and pride, blah, 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 blah. If I want to have, you know, you know, you're going to have to like, if someone wants to have sex in like, you know, whatever in, 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 and during the space, you're just going to have to get used to it. I forget. I'm paraphrasing badly what it actually Mm -hmm. says, but there's a, there's a meme out there and people took offense to it because it is mentioning essentially people having sex. And I want to be, I, 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 I don't want I want to be perfectly clear and I want to be frank about it. Like um if that's happening, that's not okay. And the people at Pride don't want that to happen. Now, I'm not gonna say it won't, because people are people. Like people get drunk, 
people made bad decisions. They let their inhibitions go out the door, et cetera, et cetera. It's free and festival and all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes something might happen. I don't think you're, I hope anyway, that people will be respectful, but sometimes people are, like I said, people are people and sometimes they're just not going to give a fuck. Well, right. Or they're going to be chemically enhanced. So Mm -hmm. they're going to, you know, be drunk or high or whatever. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, two people go off into a porta pot and, you know, knock it out. Yeah. Um, And, and again, though, kind of what you were getting at, um, if you're bringing your families and what have you to these events, then you need to be prepared to have that conversation. Should right. something be seen that you don't want your children to see? Right. And and so there's been some discussion over the past couple of years, not last year, because we don't talk about 2020. Um, but prior to that, there was this whole thing about like, you know, should there be child friendly zones to pride? Like, should pride festivals have like adult areas Mm -hmm. and you know like under 18 areas and stuff like that and i don't necessarily think that's a bad idea because i remember when delta foundation took over pittsburgh pride and distinctly there was an alcohol zone they created a whole tented area that you had to be 21 and older with proof of id you got a special wristband and then you could go get like a beverage but you had to stay in that area to drink you could not travel Mm. the whole festival um, Interesting. And Fair when enough. they and it was pretty much when they took over Pride and everyone was kind of like, like not everyone, but I mean, everyone had an opinion and a thought about it because it had never been done before. <laughs> what gays have an opinions? Uh, I know. Crazy. So I found it to be intriguing. I kind of questioned the validity of a, of a secure restricted area because my thought is, you know, some skinny bitch is going to like crawl underneath that stanchion rope or whatever and just kind of <laughs> take off through the crowd Mm -hmm. Um, but they, they did put a bunch of, you know, things in place. Like the beverages were poured in very specific containers that had branding on them. Like you couldn't go in with a container of any kind Mm -hmm. that could hold a beverage. I mean, like they, they took a bunch of precautions. So this concept that's been sort of bandered about online in the past couple of years about like making friendlier spaces. Um, I don't necessarily see an issue with it. Yeah. I mean, it, it is unfortunate because it kind of reminds me of the old video stores. So, <laughs> hey, if like you were born after the millennium, here's a little history lesson. At one time in the past, media used to be on a thing called a tape or a cassette tape. And in the Great Wars, it was beta versus VHS and VHS one. So you would go <laughs> to a physical store. And if you see the documentary about the last blockbuster, this will kind of put things together. But I want to make it clear. Black, black, whoops, not Ooh. blockbuster. Sorry. Ooh. Blockbuster <laughs> ah. did not yeah. have a back room. But smaller mom and pop video stores did have a adult zone. And typically it had like swinging saloon doors or a curtain like something yes shimmering beads or whatever and then over time they eventually got doorbells with laser eyes that like alerted the clerk or whatever that somebody went back into the adult zone um because that's where the adult entertainment you know movies were at whether they were skidamax or hardcore softcore um you know whatever the case may be And that's my parallel is it kind of creates that environment where it's like people know that there's this like other area. And if you're younger and you can't go in that space, like Mm -hmm. that you would be more intrigued to know what it is. Yeah. And then eventually you get old enough and you go in there and you're like, well, this isn't that big of a fucking deal. But anyways. (laughs) uh, But But again, like I, I, I agree with you in, in a, in a point, like, so Cincinnati Pride um, usually has an area that is like the family slash kid zone. It is an area. I don't. It's an area where there's like, yes, it's Pride, but it's kind of like here's some fun like um, amusement parky ride things that you know usually are inflatables that you can like you can take your kids on at Pride and have them play on stuff. It's it's um, it's not like. For lack of a better phrase, it's not like 
we're gay people and we're friendly and we're trying to get you, you know, talking to you as like kids, you know, doing things. It's kind of an area where kids can go if you are a family and they're, they're, you have younger kids, you can take them there while you're at Pride to go play and hang out. You can, you know, it's meant to be fun. You're still at Pride, but you're 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 not watching like the the drag queens on the state big stage performing. You might not be you might not hear all the stuff that's going on. You'll see people. You'll walk around because it's usually kind of not centrally located, but it's usually located in one area. Um, it's it's basically uh, the the playground uh, the the little play yeah. space that's that's available at um, uh, like IKEA. Yeah, or, it's a playground. Or, or even like like those uh, McDonald's, which have the the little yeah. playroom with the yeah. sliding, climby thing. Yeah, it's meant to be fun. It's meant to be for kids. It's meant to, to, to for lack of a better phrase, it's probably meant to like get them get that energy down so that they can go to fucking sleep. Um, <laughs> like, but <laughs> they'll they'll behave. Hey, and you know, <laughs> even at those things, maybe they could have have a a little tent where you have drag queen story time. Yeah, I'm sure, right. I'm sure they have stuff like that. It's, there it's there can be direct connections to Pride, not just just take your kids over to the playground while you go, you adults go right, have fun right. somewhere else. No, and you're and you're not wrong, Jeff, because technically, like I was just thinking, Damon, about how like Nina West as a RuPaul's Drag Race queen would be the epitome of the entertainer that would be at the kids section because mm-hmm. she just had these big collabs with nickelodeon um Mm -hmm. and you know that blues clues i mean these kids based things about pride and and this kind of stuff as a drag queen and it's like produced a whole album of kids songs and stuff like that and that's a special kind of thing because Mm -hmm. there are also on the opposite at 180 degrees on the other way drag queens that are not child friendly by any Mm -hmm. means of the imagination so like it's it's kind of representative of pride in a way like not everything is for everybody yeah and to kind of bring it back to like the kink stuff, um, of in a sense, like again, um, the festival should you know essentially be the representation of your entire of your of the community. You're going to have kink people in your in your gay com- LGBTQ community, whether they want to admit it or not. I hate to be mm-hmm. kind of that bitch, but like, um, um. The big difference is, again, like we were talking about earlier, like there will be some people that will be doing it for fun and aren't, I hate to say it, like they're people aren't, they're probably not really part of the community, the key community, because we know better. Like we've been all there, we've done all this shit before. We know better, we know consent to this thing. So we're not going to be doing certain things in these public spaces. We know how to be respectful. We know how to be like, you know, you know, not saying we're going to sanitize ourselves, none of that, but like most people in the kink community will not be the ones that are making, like doing full on um, scenes at Pride. Right. They're in um, public at Pride. Um, yes. So, yeah, I think, I think a lot of the organizations, all the, what you would actually see is like parent mention. Um, uh, somebody wearing a collar with a leash. Mm-hmm. That person with the collar and the leash probably either has a t-shirt or vest on. They're wearing shorts or even full-on pants or something. When you come to like the code of public decency, they are totally decent. They just yeah. have a collar on. You see people walking around with a pu- a pup hood on. Uh, a lot of the times, if you run into kids, they're going to do do uh, going to probably do pup out sort of things by like rough rough sort of things and kind of like play with the kids. But the kids are probably going to be looking at it like, oh look, you have got a puppy face on, you know, not thinking about right. the way that the adults would really be thinking of it. So it really kind of at that point doesn't matter because of the perspectives of things. And definitely anybody who's bringing their kids to Pride needs to be available to answer questions or uh, have discussed with their their kids, hey, you might see some weird things. Save your questions. We'll talk about it at home. Or um, 
or, or it'll be something of, of I'll explain the whole meaning when you're older. <laughs> <laughs> just, Gross. just we're gonna no we're gonna better... delay that conversation because it gets a little complicated, and I think you're too young to really understand. Just know it's okay. <laughs> Because there's no better parenting skill than just pushing shit off and ignoring it. Yeah. So, um, and and, or, and for me, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> so earlier this year, um, on Twitter, it got shared a bunch, and and so it's going to be included uh, on our blog. But um, forged and folded a thousand times in rainbow flame is the name of uh, the Twitter. Uh, Profile, I guess I want to say the actual like Twitter handle is at V A Spider S P I D E R. But this was back at the end of May. This wasn't even in the month of June. But they put up a really interesting series of thoughts, and I'm just going to do a quick kind of recap a little bit of it. So they said, "Okay, y'all, this is going to be a very, very long thread because I'm very, very tired of hearing quote BDSM requires consent, and therefore you bad queers should go back in the closet, and leave Pride to us good clean queers." End quote. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I make a quick side note in regards to this? Just a quick one. I absolutely love um, her description of her her uh, account. It's magical, autistic, trans, queer, Jewish, lesbian, butch, dyke in a wheelchair. Mm. Check all the boxes. I, I basically... <laughs> I basically love this person already just from that thing. And that's just the first sentence in her description. Anyways, move on. No, so they so they go on and, and they say, so we're going to talk history and we're going to unpack shit, which I thought was like the great like end of the first part of this whole thread. And they say, before anyone gets it twisted, BDSM does require consent and must require consent. And we're going to later come back to why that's a bullshit argument when used uh, against a man wearing leather pants on the street. But yes, of course it does. Um mm. And they go on to say, I think it's important to investigate what people are actually recording in a lot of these quote unquote debates and what it actually means. I will link some threads, uh, some reference threads at the end to some people who break down the philosophical standpoint. But um, and then they go on to talk about uh, which is sort of what we were alluding to. But this is really important. Um, one of the big quote gasp, 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 end quote things is circulating in discussions are videos of sex acts in which people uh, say we're quote unquote taken at pride. And the gasping includes a video of a man being fisted in public at a BDSM display and a woman being tied to a flogging cross. Um, and I probably think it was probably a St. Andrew's cross, but uh, not to be pedantic about it. Um, but I did. So the description of these things um, as quote unquote taking a place at Pride is technically true because Folsom Street Fair, which takes place in a permitted highly regulated no children allowed past this point age verified event is part of leather pride week it is literally what this should be an 18 plus space quote unquote crowd is advocating for this is that space but people mm -hmm. are deliberately in many cases ignorantly and others conflating leather pride three months from now with the pride which sprung up from the 1970 Christopher Street Liberation Day March organized by Brenda Howard, among others, that march and the continuation of the East Coast Homophile Organization's Fourth of July marches started in Philly in 1965, helped give birth to the Pride Month. And my point in reading that is if you see some of this debate and this argument and our own stuff is being used against us as a weapon mm -hmm, or as mm -hmm. like exhibit A, you have to mm -hmm. understand the context of where and when these things Yes. like to place and you know like we were saying you know it's a little tricky because the one thing we're kind of dancing around is we cannot technically say with absolute certainty 100 percent of the time that there will never be a lewd act at a pride event ever yeah. anywhere I will, that i will that it isn't supposed to take place like you just i you will can't. own that yeah. you can't you can't say that because it's never you know because there's too many it's variables I mean, if it ha it probably has already happened like several times. Like, oh, like, for let's sure. just be honest. Like, come on. <laughs> but and that's why I was referencing yeah. people being chemically enhanced because, like, your your logical skill function diminishes, mm -hmm. and so you're like, I'm having fun. It's like you know, I beat this person, or I've been with them, or whatever, you know. And so, a public display of infection. Sorry, affection. Ooh. That was that was a Freudian slip. Ooh. That was a Freudian slip. <laughs> so, <laughs> a, 
as opposed to the PDI, uh, the PDA, <laughs> uh, you know, goes a little far, you know, it starts crossing over into a line. Um, in Pittsburgh, I don't know if this this bar is still open, but there was a bar that had go-go boys like up on the bar top or you know, like in a shower like unit cage or whatever that like inside the bar was working. And notably, you know, the whole point is to basically strip down and, you know, and get tips for money or whatever. And so while it's not on the street or out in the public festival, mm -hmm. it is literally just feet away. Yeah, you know, inside of a of an age restricted area. So, mm -hmm. in theory, with the door open, if someone's on the sidewalk, they shouldn't be able to see. But like, we can't ignore the fact that the LGBTQIA plus community has a connection. Um, I don't want to say a bedrock or a baseline, but has a has a definitive piece of it that is tied to sex, whether mm -hmm. you are sexual not sexual mm -hmm. like asexual um you know it, it it doesn't matter the reality is that all of us have some behavior slash orientation some mm -hmm. some activity kind of basis and that's a piece of the broader picture that brings us all together and so like that's where i think there there becomes this like this uh, issue these mm -hmm. debates fights whatever yeah. you want to call them yeah that becomes difficult because you know yeah. what what is what is done in the light is not the same thing that's done in the dark and i think that's part of where this this comes from this conflict because i will admit the things that i have seen in leather environments i would never want to see in the light of day at least certainly not at a parade I mean, event like yeah <laughs> like i yeah, I agree. Like, I, like, so kind of bring it back to, like, everything that we've been doing. Like, so part of the issue for this conversation has often been, like, the sanitization of pride because of the corporations and whatnot that are bringing things in and bringing money in and requesting things and are doing things that are essentially conflicting with, like, kink and sex and whatever. Like, you can clean, if you could, I'm going to give you this money, but... Um, your pride kind of needs to be this. Like, it needs to kind of, like, be family-friendly and, you know, non-sexually um, oriented. The gay pride non-sexually oriented. That's kind of a oxymoron or whatever. Anyway, but, like, the, the, the idea behind it being that, like, the corporations are kind of coming in and sanitizing, helping sanitize pride, which is not always true, but it is kind of true in some ways. But again, like you said, light of day, some people are, I agree. Like, I don't think kink folks would do these things in a festival, in a parade. Now, yes, a Folsom Street Fair, 18 plus, where consent is kind of, you know, you know, not, I'm not saying when you walk in the door, I'm going to kind of caveat that, but like where you are going into a space where you know 18 plus adult things are happening. Right. That's a separate event. And it is highly regulated. Um, and even then, like these, these event spaces, mm -hmm. it comes to personal comfort level. So I'll give an example um, at Cleveland leather annual weekend. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I was at the leather market and um, somebody was trying on some leather attire mm -hmm. and notably people were appreciating how it looked of the other person and things got frisky mm. and the vendor, I'm making a big presumption here. So I'm just going to caveat it that way. The vendor decided to show their appreciation for how well the garment fit on the, the customer. And I was like, Okay, that is not something I was expecting to see here. But I had to kind of check myself slightly because there's a part of me that's like, okay, am I being a prude? Like, mm. what is the space? What is happening? What is the environment? Like, you know, and, and, and thinking and recalling back, I'm like, well, technically it is an 18 plus event. You know what I mean? Like, there's all these yeah, yeah, you kind parameters of and things, and they're not there the entrance. 
But at the same time, as a person who has organized these events in the back of my mind, I'm like, I certainly hope a hotel staff member does not walk by at this moment. Because I don't know how cool they're going to be about that. <laughs> yeah, I just have I've often felt that. I will I, I kind of will say like kink belong. I will, will say to the end of my day, kink belongs to pride. Um, point blank, period. I think, yes, are there things that are kink that maybe um, aren't for certain eyes? Absolutely. You right. need to be an adult in order to, to me, for the most part, you need to be an adult to participate in kink. Like, point blank, period. Like, you have to be able to consent in order to participate in, in kink. And you cannot consent if you are underage. So, According to the to the United States government. Well, I'm I'm going and I'm saying No, no, you that's have to that's be able the to consent. Yeah. Yeah. So which also means that in different parts of the world, because we are essentially a worldwide podcast, that age of consent could be lower than eighteen. Yes. So Yes, it can't be lower than eighteen. I think there are but, some that get down to like fifteen. There maybe, are some states that are that are like that. that are sixteen, et cetera. Like it just depends. But anyway, but even <laughs> but even then, it becomes a gray area as to yeah. like you know if if you're considered an adult, whether or not you're emancipated from mm -hmm. like guardianship. I mean, All so the, the the reality is, as a general rule of thumb in the United States, once you reach the age of eighteen, you are considered a consenting adult to make your own free will decisions put an asterisk at the end of that and a footnote because i'm sure like it you know based on like your legal geographic area that you live in there's yeah. other when, when in doubt that. 18 plus but i agree Ooh. with you david that like you know kink definitively is a, a piece of pride because it's a part of the broader scope of the community um and just because it may be something that you don't understand which was how I was a long time ago, does it mean that it can't be represented or involved mm -hmm. in some fashion? Um, I mean, in, in the, uh, let me think, 20 plus years since um, I came out to the bear community, you know, things, other things have transitioned and, and come onto the scene. When I first came out, there was a no concept or notion in my mind that I was aware of about furries. And here we are all these years later, and they have conventions, events, you know, parades in public. Um, you know, uh, just last night in uh, Ohio, there was a bowling event, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so there's definitively space for a lot of different aspects of our community. But I think the reality is we're relying heavily on people to have an awareness of their behaviors and their environment mm -hmm. and to like appropriately like behave or, or you know, yeah. maintain themselves in that. And that is where I think things get questionable because to me, that's like people shopping in public and mm -hmm. seeing how they treat their children mm -hmm. or how their children behave, you know, and mm -hmm. that I may have an opinion about that, you know, and, yeah. and not necessarily agree with it. And this is really where the, the challenge comes in is recognizing that some people have a difference of opinion mm -hmm. about how, you know, behavior or choices or actions um, exist and, and what those things are. You know, we just went through the whole past uh, year plus with individuals feeling that they have individual rights and they can do whatever they damn well please and you can't tell them what to do. And it's like, well, in some cases legally that may be true, but at the same time, there's also like laws, rules, regulations, policies that are in place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the greater public good outweighs your individual right. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, something for the courts to take up, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just as simple as that is. And I think what is unfortunate is that our education system has um, has really significantly and failed in some arenas. And one of them is uh, for people to understand what is like an individual right, what is constitutionally protected, you know, what you're what you have 
as like your personal space and what those things mean, because I think a lot of people conflate or confuse um, and they're not really sure. So they say certain things and it's like, mm, I don't really think that means what you think it means. But yeah. like you're going off and like you're on yeah. a, you're on a soapbox, you know, mm-hmm. you got this pulpit moment or whatever. And it just yeah. kind of it, it gets yeah. unfortunate because it's like, well, you know, and, and if you're really in the trenches and you believe what you believe, then it becomes all that more challenging to talk to you and try to like help you see facts mm-hmm. as see facts. the difference see the, or see the reality of the situation yeah yeah yes agreed oh so um yeah um i and, i go ahead and i think that the thing that becomes difficult about pride in general is pride is a blending of all the subsets of the community Correct. So, you know, when I go to a pride event, I am not I personally in my age and my experience, I'm not going to be surprised to see dykes on bikes, to mm-hmm. see drag queens, to mm-hmm. see, uh, you know, the gay marching band, to mm-hmm. see corporate floats, to see the leather group, the bear group, the pups, the furries like, you know, um, the fairies, F-A-E-R-I-E-S. Mm-hmm. Um you know, the pagans, the Wiccans, you know, the yeah. Jewish synagogue group, you know, yeah. the, the the Catholics, whatever, you the know, corporate there's gays, the, <laughs> the, the you know, yeah, like, we're, there's, you know, right. There's so many variations and shades to the to the broader rainbow community, so to speak, mm-hmm. for lack of a better way to phrase it, you know, that I, I don't poo poo anybody that's taking this moment to have some pride because that's where you know they're they're making their selection their you know stance or or whatever Mm -hmm. um and and on top of it everyone that goes to pride is not necessarily seeking recognition or validation there are some Mm -hmm. that are there that are actually giving the validation um to others Mm -hmm. you know uh, drew who's been on the podcast before he really has kind of like um, I don't want to say championed, but brought forward when it happens, the the parents of gays movement mm-hmm. that has happened in the past four or five years where uh, originally it was moms and then dads who would go to pride events and wear a shirt or carry a sign or whatever and say, you know, um, that, they would, yeah, that they would get yeah. free hugs and stuff like that um, yeah. because they know about the transformational like catharsis of people who have struggled because they are not accepted to have Mm -hmm. a moment where someone is saying you are a complete stranger to me and I welcome you in this space and recognize you for who you are. And that's pretty like uh, important. And I think that's a piece of kind of what gets lost in this, this, you know, uh, debate or, you know, discourse, I guess about, you know, the fact that, Everyone has different, you know, aspects of who they are, and you don't have to agree with all of them, but you also don't have to, like, shun them out or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, work to keep them away. Yeah. Um, to me, to be blunt, pride should be inclusive. It should be open to all those that are welcome there. And I'm going to caveat this with, like, because, you know, there, there are people that shouldn't be at pride, and we, we know... Those people that shouldn't probably shouldn't be at Pride. We're talking like those that are against the community, you know, uh, are against are are but, against people in the community. What what's a Pride without the protesters? Quiet, a, a good one. I mean, yeah, it, but it's just something. It's 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 one of those things where I like. I think that it it just seems that having that zoo of uh, 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 protesters just kind of over in the corner doing their thing and uh, 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 you know doing the bullhorn thing, and then all we just need is a uh, burly buff lawyer man. Uh, uh, pulling out a, a, a bullhorn on the other side, on our side, and just uh, 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 <laughs> shouting out remarks. It just seems to be like a really fun little thing and being able to make fun of the protesters. That kind of sounded specific. Well, it is. 
what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like he, he's he's talking about a specific hack. Yeah. Something that actually happened. Yeah. Somebody who, like, who's been on this show before. Uh, happened to yeah. agree. Similar interesting. It's just like <laughs> don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The absence of the protesters would be a nice little thing. Uh, but You're here's the thing: is you, you have to admit that without the protesters, we might be louder. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And and I I really when we talk about inclusivity, the people who belong at at Pride are those people who accept anybody for the for who they are for whatever they are they may not be you there are different groups but each group is yeah. is yeah. good with the other group uh the the dykes on bikes and the the um uh, uh freak flag fl uh, freak flag fag flyers <laughs> which i just made That's up awesome. um That's uh, you know, they like, might be in the play. We have the Dykes on Bikes followed by this other group, you know, and, and you you have all this. And then the only thing is, based off of the space where you're congregating, you know, you are in the appropriate thing as if you're, you know, out in public at the shopping mall or something, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, like, maybe a little bit looser, go loosey goosey mm -hmm. of that, that. Yeah. But yeah. But just just having wearing wearing leather, wearing like some sort of piece of key yeah. gear, as long as in general, yeah, satisfy public decency laws. Yeah, whatever. Agreed. You know, I mean, if you're if 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 you can in your public decency space can wear the chaps and nothing else. You know, I mean, sure. you probably wear boots. Then, by all means, you are welcome to do so. I mean, kudos to you wherever you are. Good for and, that. And Damon, just... I am so proud of you for not saying assless chaps. I will all. I will never say assless chaps because, except for stating that I will never say assless, assless chaps. chaps. <laughs> and for the record, I will probably say it just to watch people twitch. <laughs> Nice. You but do yeah, that the, just more, the, more to spite people. <laughs> you do it more out of spite than anything else. Like, <laughs> but yeah, or, the, or, the, or tease poking sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like again, it's it's if you can if you can wear it, like again, that's my that's kind of, I will say this kind of the you're wearing chaps, you're probably gonna have me. like shorts or you know, with something over the part that the chaps don't cover. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably going to be wearing something most of the time. I mean, in a in a at a at a kink leather bar, at a at a at a at an event where it is a kink party, you probably won't. Maybe you won't. You might. You might be able to take it down. Whatever. Just, yeah. You know, do your thing. Hey, you, do you. You, you know what? If you go to a rodeo, you're going to see a shit ton of a ton of people wearing chaps. Why? Why couldn't you see it see it at Pride? Motorcycles. Like again, the thing usually the thing the thing that has been kind of brought up is like just wearing the clothing is a violation of consent. No. Like I want to kind of point that out. Big, big fat no, no. Like I can wear you you can wear the clothing and be okay. Having the hood, the pup hoods and stuff, like wearing the harness. What have you? That's that is not kink, and you do not need consent. No, let me rephrase. You do not need consent. Forget that you do not. Kink. Yeah, because because it kind of could be kink. Anyway, anyway, because <laughs> well, there. Anyway, I, I like. Uh, I'm laughing at you stumbling about it. Yeah, <laughs> it becomes harder when you're like sitting here thinking about it, and you go, well, um. Maybe it is, it, um, it, it there is are certain... kink. It's just like yeah, no acts yeah. are going on. It's basically just a piece of clothing. Yeah, it's it's clothing. It's fabric. It's leather. It's it's rubber. Whatever it's whatever is made of. Um, but again, that's been one of the issues. Is like kind of what Perrin was talking about with regards to the leash. Yeah, there's difference, um, and there are certain things that become. Glory are not cool. Um, one of the videos that I watched, which I 
just ended. I think I just deleted. Um, it, it, it's history. like, like uh, if somebody is wearing wearing a collar with a leash, you do need consent to take uh, for f to take that leash and and lead them places. You don't need consent to watch somebody else do it. If that person has consent, yeah, yeah. Again, again, it's 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 going to always be a little bit gray, and I'm gonna like, I, I, I just will. Don't use the consent argument in those situations. Yeah, it's you always it, have to be it careful. It doesn't work. Consent. It just it doesn't. Work. It will not work. It's not. Really, it Let not us stop. Just, 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 just stop. Look, I do not want to see that that uh, 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 a a big ass ugly uh, woman walking around in those super super tight leggings at the grocery store. Is that against consent? No, I just don't want to see it. There's, I can just turn around, look somewhere else. It is. It is fine. There, is, she's got everything covered up, but I don't want to see that. Well, uh oh. No, 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 no. I was, I was going to be a smartass and say, but the thing is, you, well, like you could just turn away. The thing is, you could never not unsee it. So, yeah, like that, that becomes kind of the issue. Like that has happened for me twice, I think, in the past year, in which a woman <laughs> was wearing what looked like to be close to flesh colored leggings or or yoga pants or tights or whatever but like as you're coming upon seeing them you don't know <laughs> that they're actually wearing clothing so it looks like they're wearing no bottoms like they're witty pooing in and i'm just like <laughs> what in the hell did you literally and, say witty pooing yes yes i did it's, like, it's very appropriate and i was just like uh and then i had to like kind of Double take because I wasn't sure and I didn't want to be like sure. correct <laughs> <laughs> because then that means like is there a mental health issue going on in this moment like I don't understand mm. what's happening and then I realize because I look at their feet that I see a seam or a hem and these are pants and these are most likely leggings and mm. I misconstrued them for flesh mm. and my wow. thought is you should have picked something different. Yes. <sighs> but those so, unfortunate well, circumstances, nothing okay. of that is against consent. Right. Because, you know, I was bringing that up as like, you know, but the reality is I cannot unsee that. Yeah, and sure. and that's it's unfortunate. But some people might be struggling with is, 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 you know, kink being at pride and being like, well, I don't want to see, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. The collars and the harnesses and the chaps and you know and, uh, get out of the LGBTQI community. So be prepared when you go to uh, go to Pride. Understand you will you oh, expect one thing. Everybody yeah. should be keyword should be, although it's two words, but you know what I mean. Should be decently closed by the letter of the law, which is a very broad type of clothing yes. thing. <laughs> yeah. And depending on laws Sir? in your area, <laughs> you may end up with yeah. topless women that you didn't want to see. That's okay though. I don't but mind it. As long as you're prepared for that, except mm -hmm. that people are just letting their freak flag fly, which they should uh, at pride, because that's kind of one of the things you want to be proud of yourself for being yourself. Mm hmm. Um, then you have a good day. It's a good time. It's, it should be fun. Watch that show. Unless you're like me and uh, just get hot and bored. Oh. So, it, like all, all, all the all the the view, you may see some eye candy or some hot guys, but or hot whoever you're attracted to. Uh, uh, but then uh, you don't really like to do any of that, so you just go I home will, and, I will, and pop on the I will and play be video games. Let and fucking honest. When I think about Pride, um, as I have grown up and grown older, I, I enjoy Pride and I know what's happening. Um, I usually go when the chorus is singing 
I will spend some time. I will wait for the chorus to sing. And then I'll walk around maybe once, maybe twice. That is it. <laughs> I'm just, it, I, I will, I will pat- not patronize. That sounds bad. I will, you know, look at some of the booths. I, will, I have done my you know, participation maybe requirements. Some things. <laughs> <laughs> I will hit the minimum participation <laughs> requirements <laughs> as part of the LGBTQ community. I will get my card stamped and then I will step <laughs> out and be done. Like, <laughs> but you know, when da- Damon and I uh, have become old j- <laughs> jaded and I, motherfuckers. <laughs> and, and I will admit, like, I used to want to really be there and do everything Mm -hmm. but after a while i i I, i'm I'm not an outdoor person i'm not Uh, i get hot this is the problem with pride month in june like we have it in like september or october there was one year where uh we did pride downtown like actually in like on fountain square (laughs) downtown it was all like nothing but uh, asphalt and concrete and maybe a few trees here and there. It was hot. God, it was hot. And I was working the booth for the, the leather group I belong to. And it, it just became so almost unbearable. I mean, I was drinking water and I was doing what I could. I don't normally drink at Pride, period, because usually I'm going to have to perform. So, and I don't like to be drunk while I'm performing. It, it's um, <laughs> so, um, typically, I until I perform, there is no alcohol in this body. I mean, no, that's not true. Drag, yes, sometimes. Because you get free drinks. <laughs> well, the it's bars track. I would... Yeah. It's, it's, tr- it's right. Anyway. I'll say it's right. <laughs> so, um, again, I don't... It, it, it becomes a thing. Um, it becomes harder every year for me. I um, mean, there was one year, well, there was the year after Orlando where I almost didn't go to Pride, period, because there was a group that was um, not had nothing to do with Pride that wanted to, you know, basically fly their, um, flash their guns and be at the festival to support the gays. We know better than that. Y'all know better than that. And it, it, it almost was like, no, I don't even want to come. Because it was that kind of thing where I, I didn't want to get shot. Yeah, that's gonna be safety issues. So, yeah, so um, I did go, but I literally went for the chorus performance and walked around for maybe five ten minutes, and then fortunately it was um, Pride was on or around Gemini's anniversary. No, oh, that was the year that Chris and Jennifer was in town with the Pops, so we did that. I supported the gay in some way. Anyway, <laughs> I did something gay. It was Broadway. Because um, you're yeah. a musical fag. Yes. So it was, again, but to kind of bring it back to this topic, um, again, do be you, do what you can. Like Jeff was saying, be respectful. The laws or the rules or the organization that is putting on the pride. Because, again, it all boils down. It all can come back to the festival and the people who put it on. And then they can say the officials in the, the po- you know political offices. Wow. Words. Come on. Um, <laughs> the people can then say, like, oh, well, you can't do it anymore because we've had all these incidents that have happened. And we don't want you to, you know, do, 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 do. and I'm like, well, fuck you. So it like that could happen. And they could cancel pride. You know, it's it's not the thing you want to have happen, but it can happen. Um, it's not, you know, nice, don't, but it don't can, be the but... bad apple that spoils a bunch. Word. Because mm. it's, so. it's always the few that, that ruin it for the many. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. I don't All know right. about you. I think we said our piece. Hey, any last words? Um, I can't believe I'm about to say it this way. Uh, someone who is notably very gay, very out, and very well known internationally basically gives us the guidance 
on this kind of a thing, and it's quite simple. Don't fuck it up. True. True words were never spoken. And with that, I think uh, I'll try to not fuck up this end of the show. How about that? (laughs) Too late. Anyway, <laughs> hey, guess what, folks? Uh, that's the end. Oh, wait, wait, it's contact us. Pop forward to our website, comes out loud.com. Shoot us an email, it comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail at 361 col talk. That's 361 265 8255. If I'm speaking way too fast, this is all on comes out loud.com and our podcast page. You can find us on various social media outlets, including Facebook, t- Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube, as well as joining our entourage chat at tinyurlcom slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can also subscribe to the Google Calendar to find out when we're recording these things live, if we are, at, um, cal- at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. You can buy various accoutrements, such as this version one Cubs Out Loud shirt. Yes, that's right. I got a classic shirt. Damon's got a newer one made by Smashy, and he's got some stuff. I keep forgetting where where the stuff is at. Do you remember, Gary? Um, I know I'm putting you on the spot. T Public. Thank you, because I was going to say Red Bubble, but it's the other one. Yes, T Public. Uh, support him. He's a great guy, and he did these for us, and we love him so much. It's a pup consent is my four play shirt, but we also have bear and leather and. And we, I believe we also have a drag one, right? Trans. Yes. We have trans. And trans. Mm-hmm. Got a variety. Um, uh, again, that's over at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can also become a patron uh, supporter for a little buck a month at Patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, if you'd like to send us some cash to help us uh, keep this podcast running as well as maybe see some improvements, uh, you can do that at people.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on basically any podcast platform, the Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon Audible. Um, and uh, you can find me anywhere that, in the internet as Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Something or Other. Although I really haven't been on any social media platforms. So you won't really find much. But I'm there. and But you can find me on Twitch at... Uh, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, that's Windgem on Twitch, where Bears and Dragons, so you can see some of us bears do Dungeons and Dragons and me bullshit my way through um, weird stuff um, uh, over on Twitch, as well as play uh, as play some Final Fantasy XIV. It's been the thing lately. Probably still be by the time I do the show. Damon, where can people find you? If you wish to find me, you can find me as TheaterCup79 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gerber73. And uh, my definitely not safe for work Twitter, which will probably include things that are related to pride and being gay and being fat and being horny, will be... Gerber seven three x x x on Twitter. <laughs> sounds about right. We'll put it all out there. <laughs> no, it just sounds accurate. Anyways, uh, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.